Yeah, it's a great weekend. Yeah. It is an absolutely amazing weekend, actually. All right. Good Let's luck. get into the agenda. At the top of it, it's all eyes to the ladder leaders. It's two nights away from the game that you feel will be used to determine whether Collingwood remains the yardstick in the run to September. I think like any human, you shine a, a, a spotlight on something, you'd like to see a reaction. Yeah, we're going to shine a lot on a few parts of our game. Collingwood four weeks ago, a lot of people in the media declared him and said that everyone else is running for second. Well, hasn't times changed? When you see actions that are contrary to the way we want to behave, early in games, you go, OK, we need to shift this. So we've addressed that. Yeah, we've got to get to work. We've got to get to work on what we are and not recapture it, but just remind ourselves, re-establish our brand. A challenging two weeks. We certainly haven't been playing the footy that we'd want and kind of expected looking forward to our next three games, three Friday nights leading into finals and get a real good sharp up, which would be good. How much are we hungry versus the opposition? How much do we want to hunt and chase as hard as what we did maybe earlier? We're working towards not that being the case. Again, we've put some things around this week, setting it up that you know, we're going to hunt. You look for a spike in certain parts of the game, it won't take too many days to wait for that. We've hit a little bit of a lull, and I feel like for 18 or 24 months, we haven't really dealt with two losses on the trot. And knowing our group, we're, we're very level-headed, we're calm, we'll get back to work and bring our football back to life on Friday against the Cats. Using a line from, from Ken Hinckley, don't want to be top in July, well, hey, let, let's get busy in August, huh? Is it a speed hump or a roadblock? Or a roadblock. Or a roadblock. <laughs> get busy living, <laughs> hey, right? Get, get busy living. Don't get busy dying, Jerry. When you get shine a living. light, you'd like to see a reaction. Yep. So that's the overall mood around Collingwoods. We know when the team sheet lands tomorrow night that Nick Dacos is not going to be there and neither is Steel Sidebottom with a foot injury. Yeah, he's um, he, he's been going. He's been okay. He hasn't been fantastic. He was he had a fantastic first fifteen weeks of the year. Ramos there, so I would discuss as a possible All Australian women. So I don't know how long he's been carrying it. It happened last week, but it's good to get him a rest. If it's not a not a three weeker, it's fantastic. If you have a week off and, and come back and freshen up. Man, we, we are just looking for a response. Now they're, they're going to have a couple of soldiers down, but. Just looking for a response. You know, when we get to what we're looking forward to, or I, 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 was, I, I want to see what the starting midfield is. Who's the starting four this week? What are they going to go with up against... Up against when, they, when they go up against Geelong, who's in there? What changes are they going to make to the outback line? Is there any... Who's going to be the starting four? What are they going to do with Taylor Adams? Where's Pendlebury go? Where's Crisp, though? Where, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of machinations, but that's only positional. Right? So the, the, the other aspect, I think, that what Jeremy Howe has spoken about and, and, um, and Craig McRae has spoken about several times, he showed them experts of what they are good at. OK? So, and we, as I always talk about, Jared, it's an attitudinal thing, football, in my eyes. There's all these parts to it, but you've got to have your attitude right. And it seems to me that, that, that they haven't got their attitude right at the moment. And when they get the attitude right, then their strategies will be not come into play. They, they, they can fall into the into the brackets a lot a, a lot easier than not having the attitude. So, so how much is at stake? Do you feel on Friday night just to see that response and to see the the reiteration of who they are and and how they've played? It's funny. We, we, we what are we? Round twenty one. Round twenty two. We always think that you know, is there something more important at round five than round twenty two? It is because it gets a little bit more pointy to this. Is there a lot at stake? They wouldn't want to lose by 80 points, Jerry. <laughs> yes. OK, so let's just put that <laughs> okay. on the table. So, so what if they lose by 10 points? So what do they lose? They lose four points for not getting the four points, but they're still going to be on top of the ladder. But if they can still lose by four... Say they lost by 10 points against Geelong, they're still going to learn a lot about their game and, you know, and they, the boys call it the runway. We're going to learn a bit there. It's how you lose. It's just how they lose is the issue. And if they win by 50... Everyone will be sitting there going, oh, this is the win there. They were the losses that they had to have. <laughs> yeah. I remember a long time ago, and a lot of people watching the show weren't even born, but in 95, midway through the year, Carlton, Carlton lost to St Kilda in Sydney. And they were, they were cellar dwellers. Everyone's going, oh, I remember. Oh, shaky. I think they didn't lose another game, I don't think. Yep. They went all the way through to the Premiership. I know times have changed, but I, I do believe in the shake-up theory. Do you? Yes. I know you do. We yeah. spoke about and it. And now the, the sharpen up will happen, and then we'll look for the evidence of so it. So, what if they if lose, if if lose if by 40? There, then it becomes 
then it becomes a much more interesting conversation. Yeah, no, it does. Because it's, Absolutely. It, it rolls everything in and it will create an enormous amount of doubt for them. But I don't really... Ex I, I, I think you can easily rationalise what's happened over the last two weeks as long as it rectifies now. Mm. So that's my attitude towards it. Oh, I can't it. wait for Friday night. The yeah. possibilities yeah. are endless heading into this round, Robbo. Eight of the nine games play a role. I got my consulting mathematician to run the permutations. What's his name? Adam. 5,400 possibilities Boring still. name for a scientist, isn't it? 5,400 possibilities still. 5,400 5, for the makeup of the eight with three rounds to play. How, do, how does that happen? It's like the quaddy. You go one by three by two by six by five by six by five. I've told you all before, he's got a gambling problem <laughs> and I don't like to say it publicly, but he knows that. Anyway, to do a my point is... Anyway, back we come. The possibilities are endless and it's hard not 5, to let 000, the mind wander to what your own place in them might be.